It all began when my family and I moved into our new home. A charming, small cottage with a white picket fence on Elm Street. At first, everything appeared to be in order. The sun was shining and the birds were singing the day we moved in. When I first saw our new house, I was filled with excitement. It felt warm and inviting and I couldn't wait to get settled. The first few days passed without incident. We unpacked our belongings, rearranged our furniture, and met our new neighbors. Everything appeared to be normal at first, but odd things began to occur. It all started with the creaking floors. I'd hear them at night, as if someone was tiptoeing through the house. I assumed it was merely the settling of an old house, but the creaks were different. They sounded like whispers as if the house was speaking. I was alone in the kitchen one evening, preparing dinner, when I heard a faint chuckle. It sounded like a child's laugh, but there were no children nearby. I yelled out to my husband, Mark, believing he was pranking me, but he was in the garden, far from the kitchen. I had a shiver down my spine, but I dismissed it as my imagination playing tricks on me. However, as time passed, the giggles became whispers, and the murmurs became worse. They were getting to be too much. The paintings were the subject of the next event. We had several ancient family portraits hanging on the walls, and one day I noticed that they were all crooked, as if someone had deliberately shifted them. Mark assured me that it was most likely due to vibrations or a draft, but I knew it wasn't. I fixed them all, but they were crooked again the next morning. Mark couldn't deny that something unusual was going on, so we decided to stay up one night and see if we could track down the person who did it. We took a seat in the living room, turned out the lights, and waited. The whispers became more audible, and the pictures began to swing on their own. Mark grabbed a flashlight to examine when I felt a wave of horror flood over me. We couldn't locate anything out of the ordinary in the residence. There are no concealed cables or drafts. It was as if the home was playing a trick on us. We couldn't explain it, and that made us both nervous. A huge crash woke me up the following night. I dashed into the living room to discover the photos shattered on the floor. I couldn't keep my tears from falling. It was a treasured family collection that had been damaged. The activity in the house increased over time. We heard footsteps in the hallway, but there was no one there when we looked. Objects would vanish and reappear in strange places. Our tranquil home had devolved into a nightmare. Mark recommended we dig into the house's history one evening. We were confident there had to be some explanation for the weird events because it was an old building. We went to the library and discovered an article on our house. It alluded to a horrible tragedy that occurred many years ago. A little girl had gone missing and her body had never been discovered. Her family had lived in the house and the mystery of her disappearance had never been solved. The farther we dug into the narrative, the more certain we became that the soul of the missing girl was haunting our home. Mark made the decision to contact a local paranormal investigator. He arrived armed with a slew of gadgets and gizmos, eager to unearth the truth. The investigator validated our assumptions when he investigated the house. He was convinced that the soul of the missing girl was haunting us. He proposed a seance to communicate with her and learn what she desired. The investigator conducted the seance that night in the dimly lit living room. We were all holding hands and waiting in silence. The room suddenly became frigid and we heard faint murmurs. The spirit answered as the investigator began asking questions. It was the voice of a lonely and lost young girl. She introduced herself as Lily and explained that she had been looking for her relatives. She had no idea what had happened to her, but she was unable to move on. Her narrative shook us all, and I felt terrible for the girl who had been locked in our house for so long. 
we were able to help Lily in finding peace with the assistance of the investigator. Her family had moved away, and she had gotten lost in the house while playing hide and seek. She'd been trapped there ever since, unable to progress to the afterlife. Strange incidents in our home stopped after the seance. It seemed as if Lily had finally gotten the closure she was looking for. Our house, which was once a terrifying place, has now become a sanctuary of warmth and comfort. My heart was racing as I stood at the front door of our new home. It was a charming two-story cottage amid the woods. In the approaching darkness, the leaves on the trees rustled ominously. Looking up at the weathered, Victorian-style facade, I couldn't help but feel uneasy. Sarah, my wife, clutched my hand tightly, her eyes wide with joy and anxiety. Here it is, our new home, she exclaimed, shivering. I swallowed hard and nodded, trying to shake the dread that had held me. We'd been looking for a house for months, and this one seemed to be the one. It checked all of our boxes. It was inexpensive, quaint, and private. But as I stepped inside, I couldn't help but notice that something wasn't quite right. The cold was the first thing that struck me. Even though it was a balmy summer evening, the air in the house was bone-chilling. Sarah and I exchanged nervous glances, but we dismissed it as a draft and set off to explore our new neighborhood. The decor looked straight out of a period piece, with old furniture, dusty chandeliers, and faded wallpaper that appeared to whisper secrets from another era. I couldn't help but speculate about the past tenants and the location's history. We explored the mansion, discovering room after room, each more disturbing than the last. The walls of one chamber were covered with spooky portraits of people we didn't recognize. Their gaze followed us as we moved, and I couldn't shake the feeling that we were being observed. We discovered a locked door in the next room. We made a mental note to ask the real estate agent about it later, after Sarah indicated it might be a basement entry. But for the time being, we kept exploring. The deeper we went into the house, the more disturbing everything became. The walls seemed to be speaking to us, their secrets hidden in the creaks and groans of the ancient wooden floorboards. We were startled to hear a faint, sorrowful scream that sent shivers down our spines. It sounded like a lady wailing, but it was so far away and ghostly that it was difficult to identify its source. Sarah grasped my arm as my heart raced. Did you hear that? She whispered, hardly audible above a whisper. I nodded, my mouth dry, and we started following the strange sound. It took us to the end of a long hallway to a small, barely lit chamber. The room was crammed with dirty, cobweb-covered furniture and old, worn books. A flickering candle in the corner produced strange shadows on the walls. We recognized the weeping was coming from a locked cabinet in the room when it became louder. I grabbed for the cabinet door because my curiosity got the best of me. The crying abruptly ceased as I turned the knob, and the door swung open. We discovered a collection of porcelain dolls within, their glassy eyes looking blankly at us. But it was the awareness that one of the dolls was crying, its porcelain face streaked with tears, that truly froze our bones. My heart was racing in my chest as I slammed the cabinet door shut. Sarah and I exchanged frightened looks, but we couldn't stay any longer in that room. We dashed out the door, determined to flee the house, but the front door refused to budge. It was as if the house had locked us inside. We became terrified and urgently looked for another way out. The house seemed to come alive as we sprinted through the maze of corridors. Shadows danced across the walls, and spooky whispering filled our ears. We weren't alone in that place anymore. The crying persisted, becoming louder and more sad, as if the walls themselves were crying. We eventually located a window and shattered it in order to get out, cutting ourselves in the process. 
we stumbled out into the overgrown backyard, gasping for air and shaking in terror. When we returned to the house, we noticed a figure in the upstairs window. It was a woman, her eyes empty and sorrowful. She beckoned us back with her bony, skeletal hand. But we couldn't do it. We couldn't return to that place, that nightmare. We staggered toward the woods, away from the crying, away from the house that had become a terror-filled prison. Our new home was not the refuge we hoped for. It was a location where the past refused to die, and the spirits of the past whispered their agony. We left it behind, our hearts scarred by what we had seen. We couldn't help but worry about the tragic past of that house and the spirits that still haunted it. As we stood in the safety of the nighttime woods, one thing was certain. Our new home would be a domain of darkness and anguish that we would never forget. A while back, I had just bought a new house in a quaint little town. It was far away from the hustle and bustle of the town, a peaceful place with a welcoming appeal. The house was a charming two-story structure hidden among ancient trees, its white paint peeling in parts, but it had character. I moved in on a sunny day, full of optimism and excitement. I had left the noisy town in search of quiet, and this mansion appeared to be the ideal place to escape the chaos of town life. The people in town were nice, waving as I walked in. It was a friendly greeting to my new home, but the warmth was quickly replaced by an uncomfortable sense of unease. It started one evening as I was emptying my things. In the corner of the room, I heard a faint, ghostly voice. I stopped, attempting to dismiss it, blaming it on the creaky old house, but the voices persisted, becoming louder and more forceful. They appeared to come from nowhere and everywhere at the same time. I tried to tell myself that I was just hearing things, but then I realized that the furniture rearranges itself when I'm not looking. The chairs and tables would move a few inches, leaving me disoriented. I awoke late one night to a terrifying sight. At the foot of my bed stood a shadowy figure, vague and ghostly. My heart hammered in my chest as I scrambled for the light switch, but the person vanished when the room was illuminated. I disregarded it as a nightmare, but as the days passed, the disturbances became more severe. Strange noises interrupted my sleep, like footsteps echoing through the empty house. There was never anyone there when I went to inquire. The house seemed to come to life with a sinister presence. The whispers became voices, voices that taunted and mocked me by whispering my name. They told me things about the town and its terrible history that I couldn't possibly know. I tried to escape them, but they followed me about and into my thoughts. I decided to ask the people who lived there about the house one day. Their expressions darkened, and they spoke in quiet, terrified tones. They said the house had a tragic history with unexplained disappearances and odd incidents. They claimed that no one had lived there for a long time, and it was known as the Haunted House. Fear and desperation gnawed at me, but I was determined not to be ousted from my new home. I began investigating the house's history, exploring historical archives and speaking with anyone who could help. I uncovered a secret room in the attic that had been closed off for years. Inside, I discovered an old and dusty notebook filled with the accounts of a family who had once lived there. The diary described a terrifying curse that had befallen the house. It explained a method for breaking the curse and liberating the house from its suffering. It needed the discovery of a hidden key and a sacred talisman both of which were hidden within the house. With this newfound knowledge, I set out on a perilous journey across the home in quest of the key and the talisman. At every step, murmurs and eerie forms tortured me, but I persisted. This terrible spirit couldn't consume me. After days of searching, I eventually found the key concealed beneath a loose floorboard in the basement. In the attic, the talisman was hidden under a painting. I returned to the attic, 
where the curse originated with the items in hand. The ritual was a dangerous undertaking. As I recited the incantations, the house shuddered and convulsed. The voices became increasingly threatening, and the shadows twisted and writhed in pain. It was a test of wills, a battle for my very soul. And then, as quickly as it had begun, it was finished. The curse was broken, and the house went silent. I stood in the attic, gasping for breath, surrounded by a sudden sense of calm. As I walked out of the house, I knew it was finally free of its torture. The neighbors were surprised and relieved, as they had assumed that the house's curse would never be lifted. I endured unspeakable tragedies, but I had also revealed the mysteries of the past and brought calm to the house. It was a house again, and I was the rightful owner. Though the scars of the past would never totally vanish, the nightmare had come to an end. So I realized that even in the darkest of situations, there may be a glimmer of hope and a possibility for atonement. <laughs>